actually the, the founding uh, members came together around 1987 and we spent uh, the f few years really proving the heart math system and the self-regulation tools out in our own lives before we hung up a shingle, so to speak, and uh, started the nonprofit Institute of Heart Math in, in 1990, 91. Um, and at that time, we were a pretty small organization, and we were it wasn't funded with outside funding, so we really kind of had to bootstrap it up. So, one of the, the things that in 1990, 91, that uh, Doc Childry, the founder, really understood was um, how stress was, was increasing and I think we certainly see that uh, in these times. So heart math was really envisioned in, uh, from that time when we started as a user-friendly set of self-regulation techniques, to use a more scientific language, to really help people navigate these stressful times. Uh, so that's really what it's about is these intention, intentionally simple techniques. In fact, that's where a lot of people at first will miss kind of heart math is this is too simple how could this possibly work uh, but I think that's really a lot of the elegance of it is that it's a lot of complexity I mean there's a lot of science and a lot of understanding that goes into these very simple techniques but crunch down into something really simple so that when we can teach versions of them to kindergarten students or law enforcement officers military corporate executives and get a lot of benefit very quickly out of it because that's really what the world needs is things they can use right in the moment right now The, the mission of HeartMath uh, has not changed really from day one, which has really always been about um, providing simple tools and techniques to help people navigate these stressful times. And I mean, we've articulated the mission statement in different ways, but fundamentally it's always been about that, to really help humanity uh, through the, these times that we knew were, were going to be a lot of increasing stress. And that's still happening, and stress is not over yet. It's, it'll probably get worse before it gets better. The way we've gone about it has changed, uh, depending upon what era we were in. And the some ways are, from the beginning, we made a conscious choice to be in a lot of different markets, because a lot of people need help. So we have uh, uh, inroads into education and a lot of products for kids in schools, from you know kindergarten all the way through college. A uh, group that works with healthcare professionals, doctors, you know, healthcare professionals of all types. Uh, hospitals, uh, group that works in uh, more corporate settings, tra training, things like that. So it's kind of broad, but and that uh, I think is probably why we are as well known as we are. And that's now being brought down into more of a focus in certain areas. I think if one really steps back and looks at most of the problems in society, they really trace back to a failure of self-regulation. It's really our lack of ability to, to self-regulate, to be to control ourselves. And that often traces back to childhood. So one of the one of the best gifts I think we can give children is to actually, from a very the youngest age possible, teach them that uh, about self-regulation, about their emotions. As uh, most of us as adults were never taught that what emotions really are and that we actually have a much greater um, ability to self-regulate them than, than most people have ever thought possible. Just weren't taught the skills. Well GCI, it's, it's really always, or GCI stands for the Global Coherence Initiative, has always been part of our mission. It just wasn't time to really launch that and, and uh, till, till later years, uh, which was probably eight years ago that we officially launched the Global Coherence Initiative. And the early years were focused on developing measurement technology, in this case to measure the Earth's magnetic fields. And that may sound like, well, isn't that already being done? And yes, of course it is. But the type of magnetometers that are, that are out there now for measuring uh, field disturbance um, aren't suited for that they don't have the sensitivity or the frequency response to measure the what we call resonant frequencies in the Earth's fields. Uh, well, a lot of these field line resonances overlap exactly the rhythms and the frequencies that our autonomic nervous systems and our hearts and cardiovascular system operate at. Okay. Then we also have, and this is why most magnetometers don't measure. They don't see those resonant frequencies. They're just looking at the strength of the field. They need a ripple on it, you know, if them get hit with a solar storm and things like that. Those are important things, but it's very different 
than what we, we predicted or hypothesized that would uh, be a, we, would affect human health and behavior. So there's a, hundreds of studies showing that field line disturbances and things affect us, human health and, and behaviors, but the, didn't really understand why so much. So anyway, our hypothesis was, well, the frequencies that overlap us are, are probably the ones that are mediating that. And some of our current studies are actually strongly supporting that hypothesis. So currently we have GCI magnetometers, these very specialized magnetometers that are all GPS timestamps and all this. Um, eventually we want to have 12 of them strategically placed around the Earth. I think there's five right now and a couple more getting ready to go in. Um, so there's one here in California uh, at this facility. Saudi Arabia, Lithuania, Canada, New Zealand, I think that's five, and then the next ones are uh, scheduled um, are South Africa, Peru, and South Korea. Uh, so as you mentioned, it, it's been associated now with improved uh, health outcomes in a lot of different uh, conditions. The one that surprised me, which is really your question, was arrhythmias. The study was ran out of the pacemaker department, uh, so it was pretty severe arrhythmia patients. It was a pretty big study. Like it was close to 90-some patients in the, in the study. And I don't remember the exact statistics, but it was surprising how many of them uh, reduced either the severity and frequency of their arrhythmias, both ventricular and atrial arrhythmias. They had both, both types in the population. I think it was 14% of them, uh, which was, if it was 90, close to 14, right? 10 or 14 people got off all their medications. Well, GCI-type related research, um, I know you asked, aside from that, but that really is where a lot of our uh, bandwidth, our, our time and energy is going right now. Um, and this is the most exciting. We're, we've got some, uh, I, I can't tell you what they are yet, at least on camera, but some really neat findings that uh, are really surprising. Um, so we've got one of those in GCI now that is, I think, opening a door to a whole new area that will will go down. I mean, that's what we've always done is we've, we've had a tradition of following the data wherever it may lead, you know, those kind of surprises. And uh, so we've got a new doorway that just got opened. What it is showing is that we are far more interconnected with each other in the Earth's magnetic field at a deeper level than what we could have ever imagined.